Good morning. Last week we were talking about the possibility, the possibility that the vision that Isaiah saw about the fall of Babylon and the complete destruction of Babylon was not in fact referring to the Babylonian Empire that was known in the time of Jeremiah and Daniel, but in fact was referring to a time way in their future, in fact in our future, it was referring to a time when the great Antichrist would come and reign in this world, taking to himself the authority whereby he could subdue the world and bring it under the power of Satan. We are told that when Jesus returns, he will destroy the wicked with the breath of his mouth. But listen carefully, because what it actually says is not the wicked people, but the wicked one. In other words, when Jesus comes back, his battle is with the Antichrist. His battle is with the enemy, with Lucifer himself. He is the one that he's going to put down, and he is the one that he is going to destroy. Jesus himself created the angelic realm with the word of command from his lips. Now he is going to deal with the enemy in the same way, and with the lips of his mouth he's going to speak destruction upon him, restoring the world to the authority of God. But as we look into the book of the prophet Isaiah, we see amazing things. This prophet had amazing insights into the future and saw things which were far beyond his lifespan. He died in the reign of Manasseh. But many years later, about a hundred years later, the vision he had seen about Babylon invading Judah and uh, capturing the people of that land actually took place. Jerusalem fell to the armies of Nebuchadnezzar and many of its leading people were taken away to Babylon as captives. While they were there, there was one young man in particular who was being trained by the Babylonians because of his intelligence and because of his ability. He was being trained in the way of the Babylonians. And when he is being trained, suddenly Nebuchadnezzar has a strange dream. He calls together all the different magi in his kingdom. And he said, I've had a very difficult dream. And they said, well, you tell us what the dream is, and we'll interpret it for you. And Nebuchadnezzar was a crafty person, and he said to them, no, he said, if I tell you the dream, you'll just give me an interpretation you think is right. What I want you to do, if you are the people you say you are, I want you to be able to tell me the dream and then interpret it. They said, but that's impossible. If you, how can anybody know what the dream is? He said, there, there, he's just proven it. You are, in fact, all charlatans. Now, Daniel had been training, been training to be in the way of the Babylonians. And he hears about Nebuchadnezzar's dream, and he hears about how he has said to the Magi, if you don't give me an interpretation of the dream, I will kill all of you, because I think you're charlatans. And he makes contact with Nebuchadnezzar. And he says to him quite simply, the God that I worship, he, he can tell you what the dream is all about. He can not only tell you what the dream was, but show you its interpretation. And he does. He tells Nebuchadnezzar that he has seen this great vision, a vision of a statue. And he says the statue is made up of different parts. The head was of gold. The shoulders were of silver. The waist was of bronze, the hips and the legs, well, they were of iron, and the feet, well, they were a mixture of iron and clay. And he says to Nebuchadnezzar, he says, the, the gold head, well, that's you, Nebuchadnezzar. You are king of kings. You are the one who God has set up and given this empire to. After you will come another empire, the empire of the Medes, and this will come to you as a form of silver. After them will come the Greek Empire, and this will be the form of bronze. And after the Greek Empire will come the Roman Empire, which is in the form of iron. But this empire was split into two. 
because there are two legs. But these will last and gradually get weaker and weaker as they go down until they come to the feet. And when they come to the feet, you'll find it is an empire mixed of, of iron and clay. In other words, it's very weak and very poor. And at that time, the God who created the whole world will cast a boulder against all the empires of the world. It will shatter this particular image you've seen, scatter it to the four corners of the world, and then grow and become a mighty kingdom itself. A prophecy which has come down to us over the years, the prophecy given by Daniel to Nebuchadnezzar when he had been taken away in, by, in captivity to Babylon. Now, why am I saying this? Well, because of this, Nebuchadnezzar made Daniel the chief measure. And that's where we come into tomorrow. Amen.